My friends, I am at Zero Tolerance here today in Michigan. Steve's waiting inside in a new building from 2020 that they slid into about 10,000 square feet. Brand new technology. He actually had a tour a few years ago, but he's growing so quickly that there's new machines. And I just had to take this opportunity to show you guys what they got going on. So, you know what zero tolerance means. Hopefully not just personality because Steve is a very outgoing person. This is about the zero tolerance of the mold making. I mean, how much mold making did we lose shipping overseas because we didn't have the people or the or the cost effectiveness to go into making molds? But we're going to learn about that today. So I'm going to invite you in to zero tolerance to meet Steve, probably not for the first time as he is famous, but we are going to meet Steve together. Really one of those nice guys down to earth. Came back to Michigan from his Kansas facility and uh really started to grow here so steve thank you so much for allowing myself and mtd to come in it is really good to see you oh thanks for coming um great to see you this is uh this is a great this is a treat yeah well one of my i was gonna say funnest is funnest even a word one of my the fun stories i like from you is the name zero tolerance let's start with that how did you get the name zero tolerance for your company uh, all right we'll go into that story it just goes way back when when I got married, uh, my wife came up with the name, um, and I wasn't wanting to start a company at all. But she decided to be on board with me because all my former bosses were divorced, and I'm like, I don't want to get divorced. So <laughs> she came can she on hear board. us talking right now as well? She, she can. Yeah, she she's can. hearing us tell this story. She is, um, <laughs> and we we're actually sitting in, in uh, up in our bed one day, and she's like, you know, let's call it zero tolerance, and we'll and I'll be I'll. I'll I'll do it with you. We'll do it together. So she was on board, and from then on, I worked a ton to get started, for sure. Lived in the basement with my parents for three years with three kids. Wow. Once we moved back from Kansas. So um, she's got zero tolerance for me, basically. <laughs> How many of you folks out there feel, Steve, when you say zero tolerance in our relationships? However, let's also recognize that it is a great relationship. So that being said up front, I think it's I think it's worth it, right? It like is. to be said that way. All right, now let's get into some of the machining. Let's talk about the company history. I see a bunch of Mark Forge here as well. Is additive manufacturing a part of your criteria, a part of what you're getting into here at Zero Tolerance? You have to be. Um, if you're not involved with the 3D printing and and Industry 4.0 right now, you're you're going backwards. So we definitely got involved in the 3D printing. I was always interested in the the MakerBots and the PLAs and when Onyx the Onyx material came out with in, in the Mark Forge machines, it, the material was way different. They were telling me it would do all these things, and I was, I was determined to prove them wrong. Right, <laughs> so I, I ended up designing a loading cloth for our molding press, and I'm like, if, if this if this works, this is amazing. If it doesn't, I told you so. So, it ended up working. I was totally wrong, um, but it worked great, and we've been using the machines ever since for our personal stuff, all kinds of different products that we've done um, for templates and pad printing fixtures and all kinds of things. So it's been it's been really cool to see. And now I really want to get into the metal 3D printing in, in a bigger way, um, which we've already done. Well, two questions I have as we continue to walk, and I see a tons of parts on this wall over here, is one, you have kids, so have you seen the movie Toy Story? Yes, sir. Like, The Claw, the that's claw. what you made me think of for sure. Uh, and then secondly, it's nice when we're wrong, isn't it? When it we is. think we're right, when we're sure we're right, and we get to learn something new. Oh, yeah, for I'm, sure. I'm for it. I'm definitely for it. All right, we have a little designing area over yeah, here. This We do all our designs in-house. Um, Larry is actually designing um, a mold right now, an engineering change we're working on. Um, and Mike is not here. He's he's a really good designer. We've, I've been working with him for probably 15 years. And the history and the, the knowledge that's in this building is, is probably 90 years plus of wow. tooling and mold making and, and precision work. So I'm fortunate to be working with really good guys. So r here's our designing. We can walk back through, um, and we'll go into where the guys program on the floor and walk through all the machines. Let's do that. Let's go into the shop. As we head into the shop, Steve, um, are you hiring by chance? Uh, um, we are looking to get some students in um, through the summer this year, and we, we're starting a, to work with the high school and bring them in and actually expose them to learning on the software, designing a part, learning, understanding why a mold, what a mold is and why does it matter. Everything in the world today is plastic. Plastic injection parts come from people. everywhere. People. <laughs> Let's not get the into Barbie, that subject, though. No, no. <laughs> no, but yes. The, um, so we're, we're planning to hire in some kids, get them some training. I'll be out 
I'm going to have some very good people leaving the company oh. um, in retirement. So I've got, I've got some huge gaps to fill and not a lot of time, which I think that's that's industry wide, in the, right? In We're industry. all feeling that pain. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we are we are excited to try to bring in the new blood and and help help them make mistakes that are recoverable. <laughs> well, for you young folks watching right now, I would highly recommend reaching out to somebody like Steve because you don't every day get to hear someone says, "I want to learn. I want to learn from the people I work with." There's a lot of egos in this industry as well if you're just getting started. So a man like this who is no. willing to, to learn from everyone, I think is a huge bonus. Do we want to head left or do we want to head straight and show the audience? We're going to gonna walk first? in left Let's here. walk this way. We'll kind of bombard everybody. Walk this way. You know that song as well? Talk this way. No? Is anybody out there? No? All right. Let's continue the tour. What do we have going on in this area? In this area is where we do the programming, trode design, um, all the CNC programming. And then back there, we have a grinding, grinding area where we do all the surface grinding that we try to get away from, so. <laughs> but that, that. That we try to get away from? Yeah, I mean, most. Because we're yeah, machining most, it to perfection, Yeah, right? you want to make it perfect. And we have the best best grinding hands here. We've got a lot of good stuff that happens. Um, but nobody wants to do manual work from what I'm hearing nowadays. I've heard that rumor so too. Our goal is to try to make things more automated, try to get the machines to do more of the work. Uh, but you can't get away from some of the, the fundamentals. You got to know how to grind. You got to know how to mill, and that understanding helps. Way helps out in the shop so much when you're putting together a tool. Yeah, as we continue to walk around your facility, just to talk more about what you just described about the manual labor and some things not disappearing. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of molding, right? I mean, that the, the world you work in, there are some traditional aspects to it. That are, that are so key, that have been passed down. But in that, let me just also say, I am so impressed with what they were doing 100 years ago, 50 years ago, when they oh. didn't have the technology we have right now. I mean, incredible, I but you're about, right. Yeah. What, we're, what we're moving into, everyone wants the flex schedule. They want time off, they want things automated. For sure. I've learned it's now the four Ds instead of the three Ds for automation. Dull, dirty, dangerous, delicate. So now we're trying to get into that aspect as well. All right, Steve, I look around. This is kind of my forte, our CNC machines. I see a YCM there, uh, a couple of Fidals, Chevalier. I see some Makinos. We all know the significance of Makino. See a Mitsubishi Electric EDM machine. Can we talk about this area we're standing in now? Yes, I, this, this is our wire EDM machine. It is the most accurate machine in the shop by far. Um, for what it does, most wire machines are. We love this machine. It just you can do so much work, and it's unattended work majority of the time. Especially in the mold making industry, you're cutting a pocket, you're cutting inserts, and you're cutting a bunch of them, and you're letting it run, doing ejector pin holes, all that stuff. The five-axis machine, the Makino does a great job. Just like I've explained, it it just takes it is automation in my my definition. You're taking. Uh, six setups into two setups and I'm allowed to let that thing run longer more accurately more unmanned so it's it's a huge benefit for us um, and Makino's a ph phenomenal machine too yeah something I'm gonna add on with Steve when we're talking about just this general area here EDM I mean isn't that the gift of EDM you say set it and forget it right yeah. and then you can get those those tight corners that might be almost 90 degree because typical average I believe is Eight thou, ten thou of the wire yep. diameter in yeah, order to make use, those cuts. We use and, ten. Yep. Yeah, ten thou, and usually brass as well. And Correct. then you're right. I mean, how many of you out there are frustrated right now with having to move a block from machine to machine to machine, or even in best case scenario, you're using some sort of zero point fixturing at the bottom, but you're still moving, work holding in and out of the machine for op one or 10, 20, 30, 40 as we're calling it now. I used to call it one, two, three, four, but we're calling it that now. I mean, you're you're so right when it comes to making sure that more things can be done inside of one machine. And on top of that, how valuable is real estate space? Oh, that's very <laughs> valuable. You know, I would love to move to a bigger building. I would love to expand, but to actually do that, it was um, it's cheaper to move, but it's less expensive when you add in the machining, move, moving machines, equipment, and recalibrating, setting up. 
that time is just huge. So it's my my focus is to become ridiculously productive in this facility to where I have to move or build. So my goal and the way to do that is is to bring in some more automation as I learn how to do it and learning from the people with experience that are doing it now better than us. And there's a lot of them, but. If I'm on that path, I'm going to get there too. So I'm I'm excited about it. Let's continue to walk, Steve. And as we do walk, I want to bring up for the audience again. Do you keep hearing Steve defer from himself to other people? Talk about other people are doing it better. I'm learning from other people. That to me shows how successful and great this young man is. Because it's those of us who realize that we're not doing everything perfect that showcase our willingness to learn and in most cases we are doing it better than most people and I'll speak for Steve by saying that he is as well if you're looking for molding work out there if you're looking for a partner company zero tolerance can be your go-to all right Steve that was a, a great little segue into the area yeah, we're in now to look at a couple more different style idioms another Makino and you have some other robo shots over here from Fanic as well what section of your shop are we in now <clears throat> right now, this is our EDM department. We've got a dedicated uh, Makino cutting electrodes, and we've got two Eagle machines, um, a 500 and 800 gantry style sinkers. They are workhorses. They do a lot of work for us. Our five axis machines have actually cut down that EDM work, and we now outsource this, this part of our company more than we have because of the five axis capability has freed up our EDM capacity. So that is uh, a, a hidden benefit of, of the five axis um, machines and how we're trying to utilize them. Sometimes we still need to make troves and drop them here and there. So I can't say it, eliminate it. it eliminates it, but it does reduce it, the need. Um, that's it for, for, this, for this area. It's, it's, it's really a, a great outsource spot for us um, for another revenue, but it also opens a spot for I need someone else <laughs> to help me. Well, I know that as we're looking around, we see parts everywhere. I see some blue situation over here as well. Maybe we can discuss that. But I know something that's big on your mind is the education side of things. So I'd love to close out this factory tour talking with the audience about education. I know you have a, a mold maker minute or what? Yes, what? we have launched um, a series on YouTube through our LinkedIn where we're going to be doing a mold making minute. <clears throat> once a month, if not two times a month, and just go through some of the process. I mean, just something simple like we're looking at right here is that this is a mold base. It's got a pocket for an insert for the part that was actually in our five axis. We got a sprue, we got leader pins, all these plates, they gotta be just right. And this this is the stuff that makes a mold happen. Um, and it's not very, no one really talks about the, the, the nitty gritty parts of the mold. Everyone wants to see the cool five axis machining, but. This stuff is foundational to making a mold happen and making it, it run for years because mold, some of the molds we've seen can run for 30, 30 years. Um, so our goal is to try to make something that lasts a long time and gives the customer the, a great part. Great part. Well, speaking of something that lasts a long time, uh, when you were in 10th grade, flirting with your now wife and blocking her from your geometry books because she was trying to cheat off of you, right? Because you were That's that right. smart person. Um, what would have attracted you in, as your 10th grade self into the manufacturing world as we're trying to educate a younger audience out there about how fun and sexy and entertaining and yet productive and important and significant manufacturing is because without manufacturing, what, we're, we're back in the stone age again. Yeah. So your, ten -year -old, your 10th grade self flirting with your now wife, protecting your books and geometry. That's right. What, what would you say to that person, to those people out there, to say, look, guys, this stuff is cool. This stuff does last a long time, and it's everything around us. Uh, that's a really good question. I'm ho I, hopefully, I won't overdo this. I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> I had a knack for it. And if you're like me, I am a horrible speller. I, get, I understand numbers, and I could see the geometry side. When I took geometry in high school, it clicked for me. And some people, I can see that happening. They have a gift for it, you know, but, you know, put the fan, the flames of that talent. And, and that's a huge thing. If I might have been terrible in school, but I really understood something that I could really wrap my head around and apply it to something. And I was fortunate to have a good teacher in high school, which is a whole nother story, who's helped students, 30 of the students create their own companies. So we'll go into that later. But the education part is so huge. This is an exciting industry. And if you suck, suck at math like I do, then maybe there's a field for you. You might want to <laughs> cut that out of there. But, but 
there, there is a lot, of, a lot to say about having something that just comes natural and finding a where, where in the world does it fit for you, whether it's this or it's anything else. I think it's important to, to not feel if you're just not good in school, you know, you're, there's no way for you to make it, and that's just not the case. There, there's so much talent, and our education starts in kindergarten, our ability to change and learn. I think that's, kindergarten is the most important grade in my book. Because that's where we learn to fail. That's where we learn to learn. Wow. Dropping microphones, I hope not, but dropping knowledge for sure. All right, there's a lot of companies out there right now that don't want to do mold making overseas anymore as we're doing a massive reshoring initiative. So we want to know, after doing this for and realizing zero tolerance could be the potential partner for people out there, how we can find out more about you. You're always already doing a great job on social media. Shout out to Murphy for that, by the way. Absolutely. But a great job on social media. But someone wants your direct website, even though Google helps us find everything. You just Google zero tolerance, you'll find it. But what's your website and how can we find you if we want to do more work with you? Uh, my website is zerotolerancecnc.com. Make sure you put the CNC on there. Um, that's how you can find us. You can find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Facebook, and uh, some YouTube. We're, we're going to start our YouTube with the Mold Maker Minute so we can try to go through and explain a lot of these fun things and explain how it works, and that's how you can find us. Precision, education, open-mindedness but zero tolerance. If you're looking for that mold making partner out there, if you're looking to pull things back from other countries, make it here in the USA, Steve is your guy. This company is continuing to grow and continuing to seek perfection while simultaneously educating an industry to come into this world to be a part of it as well so that you're all taken care of. Thank you all for watching. This is Zero Tolerance. This is the newer factory tour. Hopefully they'll come back again in a couple more years so we can do it again because they're continuing to grow. Steve, I really do appreciate your time. Thank, no, thank you so you very much, much for coming. No problem.